many people say that it's unnatural for cats and sometimes people say even dogs to be on a vegetarian diet. What would you say to that? That's a really interesting claim and we need to have a uh, closer look at that claim. If you look at cats, for example, many people think that a vegetarian diet for cats is unnatural. Look at the natural lifestyle of the wild cat. It consumes a variety of small mammals, birds, large, large insects, uh, which it hunts and kills. Once it does make a kill, it gorges as much as possible at the time to prevent consumption by competitors. That's followed by uncertain periods of hunger. So that's the natural lifestyle of the cat, the natural diet of the cat. So today's house cat is maintained on a diet uh, comprised of cows, sheep, pigs, um, fish, uh, a variety of species that would never normally eat, uh, which are packaged up into uh, tins or dry kibble forms, uh, fed at predictable times every day. Uh, it's quite clear that the natural lifestyle, the natural dietary regime of, of a cat bears no resemblance to an actual natural uh, diet in the wild. Now on top of that, we add in a variety of uh, potentially hazardous ingredients, a variety of slaughterhouse waste products that are considered unfit for human consumption, a whole range of hazardous uh, ingredients go into these diets. They may be antibiotic and hormonal residues and so on. It's arguable that maintaining cats and dogs on these diets is more, more actually a violation rather than a, a protection of, of their rights. Uh, you can also argue that any temporary discomfort a cat or a dog might or might not experience in transitioning onto a vegetarian diet is of far lesser ethical significance than the very profound um, animal welfare issues experienced by uh, farmed uh, cows, sheep, pigs and other animals that actually go into these diets into the, you know, the, the very confined conditions in which, which they are farmed on in, intensively uh, on intensive farms, the variety of surgical mutilations that they are commonly subjected to, usually without painkillers or anaesthetics. So these uh, factors are, are often of far greater ethical weight. Consider fish for example. Many people think it's natural to feed cats fish. Well, uh, Jed Gillen is the author of this book, Obligate Carnivore, and he describes a very interesting thought experiment. He says, try this one morning, try uh, skipping your cat's breakfast, take him down to the beach. What natural instincts are likely to kick in? Driven by hunger, how likely is your cat to leap into the ocean, swim 50 miles or so out into the deep sea, engage uh, a 1,200 pound tuna in an underwater battle to the death because an adult tuna can actually be as large as a horse? The, the idea that um, cats naturally consume tuna or other fish is quite ridiculous, as is the idea that cats would naturally drink cow's milk. The consumption of the milk of other species by adults is almost unheard of in nature. It only occurs for uh, gulls um, who drink the milk of elephant cells, really, and of course uh, human beings who drink cow's milk and goat's milk. Uh, the fact that cats do quite often enjoy cow's milk and enjoy fish and all the other unnatural ingredients uh, that they are maintained on simply demonstrates their ability to actually enjoy and be healthy on a wide variety of great ingredients which are completely unnatural to them and uh, that also could apply to vegetarian diets. Cats can certainly live healthily on a vegetarian diet providing the diet is nutritionally complete, reasonably balanced and as I say I do advise that people monitor the acidity of the urine from time to time but there's no scientific reason whatsoever why cats can't live perfectly healthily on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet uh, over the duration of their lifetimes.